Easter story is a story of love, forgiveness, and triumph. It's the story of how God loved us so much that God gave Jesus, God's only son, to be the eternal sacrifice for all of our sins. So whenever we fall short, we can be assured that God won't abandon us. It's a story that is worth telling, worth celebrating. The Easter story is the reason that all other stories in the Bible make sense, including our focus text for today. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would have gladly filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But we, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fat calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Have you ever read one of the stories that people submit online entitled, Am I the Jerk? So a person will write in about a situation that they found themselves in, you know, either something they've done or something someone else has done, and the internet hive will weigh in on whether or not that person is the jerk, if they're not the jerk or if everyone sucks here. So this is how I would imagine it could look if the older brother wrote into it. Am I the jerk? My younger brother demanded his inheritance and took off for a few years with it. We really didn't hear much from him other than the fact that he was living it up, spending his money on booze, gambling, and company. And at times we didn't know if he was alive or dead. He ran out of money and because he had no work experience, he could only get a job that most people wouldn't want to take. And then he shows back up at home saying that he's sorry and doesn't deserve to be called our father's son. And our father throws a big party for him and doesn't tell me about it. I only find out after I get back from slaving away from my father in the fields, you know, working the land that's my inheritance. And then my father expects me to just be happy about my brother showing back up. 
Well, I gave him a piece of my mind and I told him it wasn't fair that I worked hard and did all this stuff for him and the land, the land that is mine, that would be mine when he dies, when my brother who doesn't inherit as much as me because I'm the older brother and he's the younger one, he already took his share and he spent it all and now he expects to just come home and be welcomed back in. Am I the jerk? Now I'm curious, do you think that the older brother is the jerk? Do you think he's not the jerk? Or do you think everyone sucks here? The thing is, I think that many of us can empathize with the older brother. I mean, his younger brother acted like a total punk. He pretty much wished for his father to be dead. He took his share of the inheritance and he bolted only to waste the money and then come back. And then his father treats him well when he comes back. His father gives him a party and kills the fatted calf. I mean, that doesn't really seem fair, especially when the older brother did what he was supposed to do. He stayed at the farm, he worked hard, and he feels totally slighted. You know, it's like when we work hard for something and a person who hasn't worked hard at all just slides in and gets the reward, what we feel we deserve. Like when we're doing a group project and one person is a total shammer and still gets the same grade as everyone else. Or when we're passed over for a promotion at work by someone that we don't feel deserves it. Or when we lose out on a spot on a team or part in a play to someone that we don't think is as good as us. For those of you with siblings, think of a time that you worked hard and did your chores, you kept your room clean, you did your homework, and your sibling didn't and then they got a similar reward as you, or an even better one in your eyes. It's just not fair. And it makes you wonder, why even bother trying if the ones who are not doing anything still get the same reward? It's demoralizing to have that happen. When you put in the work and someone else gets a reward or credit for it. So at first glance, saying the older brother is not the jerk, that he's justified in his anger, it makes sense. On the other hand, we could ask, is the father a jerk for loving his sons, loving both of them? Is he a jerk for welcoming his son back even after he wasted the money and especially wished for his father to be dead. Are we the jerk when we give a second chance to someone, especially if it's a second chance to a person who has hurt others and those who have been hurt by that person are upset by us giving them a second chance? And how about that older brother? Yeah, his younger brother certainly made some not great choices. And whether or not he was truly repentant and sorry for what he did, when he came back and told his father he wasn't worthy to be called the son, I don't know. But he did make the attempt. And he didn't ask for his father to throw a party for him. He wanted to ask to be treated like one of his father's servants. But his older brother, didn't give his younger brother a chance to explain himself. He didn't even talk to him. He just completely wrote him off and yelled at their dad. The older brother acted like their father's love for his younger brother was a weakness, a burden, something that wasn't fair. But love isn't necessarily fair in that sense. And thank God for that. Because if love was fair, if we were only loved and forgiven when we deserved it, I don't know how much we'd actually be loved and forgiven. It is precisely the fact that God loves us and forgives us regardless of whether or not we deserve it that makes this gift so amazing. And no, it's not fair. It's not fair that bad things happen to good people that good things happen to those people we would consider bad. It's not fair that those who take the easy way out seem to get ahead in life more than those who don't. 
It's not fair that those who seem to be not as dedicated to their faith are loved by God and forgiven, or that those who do terrible things in our eyes are given the same promise of love and forgiveness. It's easy to condemn and say, it isn't fair when we feel like we're on the side of righteousness, when we feel like we're on the right side, the correct side. But what about those times where we are the prodigal son, coming back to our families, coming back to God, embarrassed, maybe even feeling ashamed of what we've done, then is it fair? So last week I had the honor of being part of a ceremony where a soldier was awarded for saving someone's life. He didn't ask the man who was calling for help if he deserved to be saved. He just saved him. We don't ask our loved ones if they deserve to be loved. We just love them. We may not like them all the time, but we still love them. I don't know if God likes us all the time, to be perfectly honest. But God does still love us. Jesus went to the cross for all of us, even and especially when we don't deserve it. The story of the prodigal son can help us rephrase how we see others when something that we think of as not fair happens to them and to us. And yeah, it may not be fair, but how is it when we're on the other side? This is the good news of Christ, that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we are welcomed back, even when we do things that really are kind of shady, or maybe even extremely shady. And I would imagine that there is a celebration in heaven every time a person who has been lost, every time a person who has gone off the path that God has for us comes back and is found. For God, it's not about only loving, forgiving, and saving those who deserve it. It's about loving, forgiving, and saving all welcoming all back because we are all God's children created in God's image. Amen. A couple of reflection questions for you to take with and use them in your devotional life. Use them to go a little deeper into the message however you want to. The first is, do you think people should only receive forgiveness or love if they deserve it? And second, is it easy for you to jump to judgment when deciding if something is fair or not? Is it easy for you to take a look from, at the situation from a different perspective? And how might looking at it in a different way change your judgment? Mm -hmm.